America rose to prominence economically in the world, you know, not just because it had a vast continent, but because it basically educated its children and its workforce better than any other nation. Our earliest legislation, the Northwest Ordinance, said part of the land in new settlements had to be dedicated to a common school. In the 19th century, we became the first place to give almost universal access to common schooling up to eighth grades. I'd say almost universal because in the South, uh, we had the plague of slavery and Jim Crow. Over the last hundred years or so, there's been a tremendous increase in educational attainment. We can track the education using our census data. Of what you see is someone born in 1875, on average, got about 70 years of schooling. But if you then look at the early 20th century, each generation of people basically had two more years of schooling than their parents. The next major advance was an American invention of the modern high school. There wasn't some big federal program to build the high school. It was small towns in Iowa and in Nevada and Oregon and Massachusetts using their own local tax revenue to give kids an opportunity to try the new world of business, to be a clerical worker, to read blueprints and become a manufacturing worker, to leave the farm. From 1910, less than 10% of American kids got a high school degree. By 1940, the majority of American kids were finishing high school. Today's youth are more educated than their parents, but something has changed and slowed down. And while today's young people you know, are more likely to go to college, they're not that much more likely. So what we now know is in the early 20th century, there was a reason why so many areas were interested in investing in schooling. What you got if you could get a high school degree was as big as like what you get if you get a college degree in improving your earnings. So building a high school was a very valuable thing for a local community. The person who could get a clerical job no longer was only an elite person who got a job from their father's firm. The kid growing up in rural Iowa or the kid you know, in Brooklyn who had access to high school could now compete for that job and it narrowed inequality by reducing that educational wage premium for jobs like clerical and manager. And the mid 20th century, we sort of had the best of all worlds, rapid expansion of education, rapid expansion of technology. There's a quite reasonable hypothesis that what we call skill bias technological change, that new computers, you know, advantage highly educated people, not just those with programming skills, but those able to handle big data and use it to market things, to design innovations, that that's been an important force behind inequality. So what we really wanted to understand is, is the recent period different economically because technological change is different or is it because the role of education and helping people to cope with technology is different in this period than in the past? When you look at the growth of inequality, particularly of wages in the US in uh, the last three decades, there are two major components. One is the tremendous growth of the college premium post-secondary schooling. So the new technology has been affecting what were the middle skill jobs of the mid 20th century. So a clerical position could easily be replaced by new computers. Um, data entry isn't as important when you can scan things in. Someone able to market it or interpret that information, a college graduate or grader often does much better. A typical college graduate earns almost twice as much as a typical high school graduate. A typical high school graduate at prime career might earn, you know, $40,000 and the college graduate more like $80,000. And a way to think about the path of inequality and the college wage stream is to think about a race between education, the supply side, and technology, the demand side. In periods when education races ahead faster than technology, one sees declining inequality in education differentials. When technology moves ahead faster than education, one sees widening. So you want them both to move ahead fast, but you don't want particularly technology to be too far ahead of education um, because that's gonna lead to rising inequality. So the first place we need to look at to uh, reduce inequality and create more broadly shared prosperity is trying to win the race between education and technology. And to do that, we've got to have more rapid expansion and greater access to higher quality schooling. In the early 20th century, we provided everyone a guarantee they could go to high school. We have not yet done that with college. So by expanding education, we know the individuals who get more educated will have large returns in income. We would be wealthier and they'd provide more competition for the elites and that would tend to reduce inequality as well. <laughs>